legislators especially those in the ruling coalition kenya kwanza dismissing the allegations claiming linturi was being used as a sacrificial lamb the mover of this motion as courageous as he thought he was he has completely failed the house he has failed to show us the precision with the law that he ought to show in line with the constitution and the standing orders as i oppose this motion it is simply because many times we have wanted to sacrifice people who are not really victims of what we want to sacrifice them for. To say this, I should allow the Committee on Agriculture to lay a very conclusive, conclusive report. We have been with the farmers, we have talked to these people, and Mr. Speaker, the truth shall come out. However, the majority, 149, voted in favor of the motion compared to 36 who were opposed to the motion three members abstained but a section of the mps opposed to the names of some names contained in the 11 member team this is a vote that has a critical threshold once we have reached the threshold it matters not whether you voted or not the national assembly appointed tj kajuang robert mbui naomi wako and rachel nyamai as members of the 11 member committee Others include Samuel Chepkonga, George Gitonga, Muragara, Jane Njeri Maina, Kasim Sawa Tandaza, Malulu Injendi, Yusuf Farah, and Catherine Omanyo. The 11 select member committee has until Monday 13th to table their report. If the select committee report finds that the allegations are substantiated, the House will take a vote whether to approve a resolution requiring dismissal of the Cabinet Secretary. Daniel Karioki, KTN News at the parliament buildings, Nairobi. Well, the question that remains very key for the viewer this morning is what is this impeachment? What is the procedure? What is the constitutionality of the same? And that is why we have to answer the question, why, what next? By having the advocates in studio this morning, I want to appreciate the advocates right here, right now, as they quickly give us a quick fire on what legalities are surrounding this matter, and even politically at some point. Uh, Wakili and advocate Javas uh, Bigambo, thank you much, uh, very much for creating time to be here. And also Wakili advocate uh, Nurdin Kagai, we appreciate your voice on this matter. Quickly, let me just ask it as a layman would. The constitutionality around this matter, we don't see frequently impeachments of CSS in that position as in this manner. If I'm looking at how the members voted out of the 188 members of parliament in the House, 149 voted in favor of the motion, 36 against, while three abstained from voting. Let's start with you, Kagai, on this matter. Quickly, what does the you know, constitution say? Are we at par with the law? You know, uh, so far, they've followed everything up uh, to the T. Because matters of dismissal or impeachment of a cabinet secretary come under Article 152.6 of the Constitution of Kenya, where it states uh, the, the person who proposes the impeachment must first get support or approval of at least one quarter mm -hmm. so that uh, you move the motion. Now, the motion is moved on three elements. One, gross violation of the, of the, of the law, that is the Constitution and any act. Two, it can be elements of any crim criminality, national or um, international law, and also gross misconduct. Mm -hmm. So they have a list of issues they quote, being courtesy of the factors of um, fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it moved to what happened yesterday, at least one third approval, so that now the 11 select committee members can be formed. And that is where we are right now. And uh, they approved the names, and uh, they're supposed to go for recess, but they approved the names, the 11 member committees, yes. where the majority and the ma minority leaders came up with the names, and also Jubilee had one name. Uh, moving forward now, the committee will has 10 days. Yes. These 10 days, they will then table a report. And in the report, the report will have two folds. One, whether the allegations are unsubstantiated, which it means it ends there. And if it's found to be substantiated now, now it means the same cabinet secretary has a right to appear before the, uh, before the committee, actually. And uh, once he's had and uh, a resolution is made, the same resolution is now taken to the House. Now the House can adopt the resolution mm -hmm. or actually uh, make amendments to it. Now if it adopts the resolution, and it means it has passed and the dismissal is actually legal. Now the Speaker yes. will now inform the President. That is now uh, after uh, uh, 1.2.10 happens. 
inform the president and then the president will now have before him a resolution to dismiss the cabinet secretary. All right, now I want to hear from Bigambo, and I appreciate how you've outlined that in a nutshell. Um, the president, purportedly, people are, and other analysts, including some of very key voices, ex-ministers, etc., saying he has a power upon him to fire an incompetent CS, even without the entire procedure we're seeing right now. What does, how does that come out in the Constitution? Is it envisaged that he have such kind of powers to this point that he would just quickly, um, if Lim Turi is uh, proving to be incompetent, fire him, or is the president showing some confidence yet on this particular matter that the CS could be acquitted of this? Well, thank you. First, we are in a moment of awakening, right. constitutionally and even politically. I call it awakening because critical choices are upon us, upon parliament, and upon the president. And the weight of the cross of liability weighs heavily upon Linturi at okay. this moment, given the manner in which the House voted yesterday. Now, the issue about the House voting in their majority, mm -hmm. agreeing with the motion by Honorable Mboka that uh, Honorable Linturi, the CS for Agriculture, is potentially culpable for crimes, violations of the law, and even misdemeanor, speaks volumes about the manner in which we need to head as a, as a country with uh, respect to executive running uh, national affairs, mm -hmm. matters government. Secondly, we know that with respect to the Constitution as it is, Article 152, sub Article 6, and even when you look at Article 1, sub Article 2 of the Constitution, mm -hmm. where the delegated responsibility from the sovereign mm -hmm. lies squarely upon the shoulders of members of parliament. Mm -hmm. In this case, then, we are faced with a critical moment where it takes the consciousness and the conscientiousness, for mm -hmm. that matter, of parliamentarians to decide, <coughs> regardless of political inclination or... Uh, uh, where the positions where they lie or persuasion, whether actually they feel right and rightly moved by the allegations facing Honorable Inturi right. with respect to matters fed fertilizer. Beyond that, let us appreciate that impeachment comes as a mechanism of last resort. Now, it is a critical instrument mm -hmm. among many other instruments for checks and balances within our governance framework. All right. It is a constitutional edict and remember that constitutional edicts are peremptory. They are not mere suggestions. Mm -hmm. Now, for that matter, given what my uh, kindred and council, fellow councillors said, yes. the moment the select committee mm -hmm. will uh, adjudge this matter, of course, through the um, mechanisms of natural justice where Linturi has got to be given right to be heard, mm -hmm. and then maybe agree with the allegations facing him, if at all the select committee agrees that uh, these matters or the claims against Linturi can be proven and then presents to the House, again the onus falls upon the House whether to save Linturi mm -hmm. or not. In fact, in these circumstances, either the Select Committee can save Linturi mm -hmm. or the House can, sec uh, uh, can uh, save Linturi. All right. But beyond that, in the event that the House votes or, appreciate, or, or assuming that, for example, the Select Committee presents an affirmative verdict to the allegations, and the, for, the House also, in plenary, discusses, discusses, and votes in agreeing with such kind of affirmative report. As you said, and of course, Pastor 152, sub Article 6, mm -hmm. the Speaker of the House will convey the same to the President, who is then duty bound to relieve the Cabinet Secretary of his duties. Further, <coughs> let it be known then that the moment Parliament has voted, for example, to oust or to impeach a Cabinet Secretary, and the same is conveyed to the president, who is, whose hand, actually hands are tied. Mm -hmm. The thing is that the decision of parliament cannot be overturned by powers of the court through judicial review. Okay. So it becomes final that parliament's work cannot be overturned by the court through judicial review with respect to impeachment of a cabinet secretary. Indeed, because I was going to ask this question that has now come up, because you, in Kenya we have seen, mm. since mm. I think 2023, mm. um, uh, that uh, once something is done, mm. there's always a petitioner running to court. So mm. in such cases, mm. there was that question of if 
the impeachment goes whichever way, mm. do we see an issue of a petitioner again getting as to the judiciary corridors for this matter challenging either if the impeachment was successful of, or if the CS is sacked? You see, that will be an excess in futility and it will only make sense to the legal council that will be uh, gaining legal fees. Because at the end of the day, once parliament uh, does its work mm. and a resolution is sent to the president for dismissal, for example, that is done. And the president will now have to dismiss the cabinet secretary. You know, you asked about whether the president has powers. Yes. You know, Article 152.5 uh, speaks that the president can reassign or dismiss. So the president has powers even today to decide to dismiss Linturi or he can decide to reassign, which we hope he doesn't at the end of the day. And also, Linturi has a right to resign as well. All right. See, yes, he does have a right to resign. So oh, I don't in know fact, let me ask you, Nudin, what yeah. happened to this? If, you, uh, if your integrity is doubted, you should step aside. At what point does someone step aside to allow investigations to start with? Well, we don't see that most the, the beauty often. about Kenya is some would rather die than resign. I don't even remember <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. You know, because I remember the, the, back then, there was a very good impeachment that happened, uh, the Kimunya impeachment, which Halale was center and trying to make sure he went home, which he went home. So at the end of the day, it talks more about uh, chapter six of the constitution. When you look at yourself, do you have integrity? Mm -hmm. Do you have values? If, for example, the, the issues uh, right now that are against Linturi, if at all you feel that you are some, someone who believes in integrity, step aside, clear your name. But in this country, like I told you, some would never resign. Let me hear. But the yes. beauty about it is that this is a shockwave and this is a message to the cabinet secretaries who believe that they are, are untouchable. And I hope members of parliament will do their work diligently, away from party loyalty, okay. loyalty and away from divisions. Focus on what is before you. If at all he is found culpable, then let the axe fall where it's meant to fall. Bigwambo, there's an argument, however, that there's so many other people involved in this besides Linturi. Why is it so heavy on him? Uh, constitutionally looking at his office, for example, we're looking at NCPB officials who, of course, have been charged with a fake fertilizer. But hearing from ex uh, or former agricultural ministers, they're saying there's so many government businesses that can bypass a CS so he can fully be put on the spot. Well, first of all, there is a reason why Kenyans, by way of 67% in 2010, voted for a new constitution. Right and the same was promulgated. That this constitution therefore must be held with the respect and worth upon the paper on which it is written. <coughs> if at all we respect the constitution and its edicts in the manner as it was framed, then when you look at the executive and the functions of cabinet secretaries, they hold critical supervisory powers up in terms of superintending their various portfolios. Mm. Now, when you look at the cabinet secretary, when you look at the principal secretary, mm -hmm. the decisions of running and managing the ministry squarely lies upon them. But remember, there's a chain of other persons. Right. When it comes to matters of responsibility, in fact, for purposes of lessons being learned, it must not just end with hounding Linturi out of office. Through Article 157 of the Constitution, mm -hmm. the DPP mm -hmm. has got critical responsibilities, mm -hmm. including the DCI to investigate these matters. The DPP has got the powers to, in fact, now have charges pressed upon uh, uh, persons that are found uh, culpable. And in fact, by way of the decision to prosecute. Beyond that, mm -hmm. let us appreciate to them that within a ministry, we have got other persons. Uh, whether they are directors, whether it is uh, persons in charge of uh, you know, supply chain, persons in charge of procurement, liability is extensive. And that's why I, earlier I've opened by saying yes. that the, the weight of responsibility presently lies upon the minister because he is the one in charge of that ministry. The PS mm -hmm. is the accounting officer in that ministry. Responsibility, therefore, must be pointed upon those persons because it cannot actually be uh, placed on any other side. Remember that the history of impeachment, for instance, is as old as constitutional democracy lasts. And therefore, it's not a new thing. All right. Therefore, in fact, looking at the manner in which parliament acted, it is important, therefore, that the president, in fact, acts fast. Not just to save face, but also it has been made later for him. Presently, I understand the president is to address the media right. in the afternoon right. at 1 p.m. Mm. He can actually relieve Linturi of his responsibilities and even reorganize his cabinet in the circumstances. It is an opportune moment for the president. Okay. Let me hear from you quickly. And you know why I say this? Yes. Because the allegations facing Linturi make it very difficult for him 
to discharge his, 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 his duties as a cabinet secretary freely, conscientiously, and in fact with an open mind because the millstone hanging around his neck are the allegations. You know, these are the allegations that might be coming from different, uh, you know, thinking and senses politically are saying, mm -hmm. and you had it in the floor of the, of the House as well. Mm -hmm. Other members of Parliament saying Linturi could, uh, is probably being used mm -hmm. as a sacrificial lamp mm -hmm. at some point. I mean, uh, does the lawgiver listen to such kind of allegations at this point in time? Because the members of Parliament are acquitted with the law. Well, you, you have to realize that members of parliament also have allegiance to certain people in this, in this country, and some might be defending someone. Not that, that, not, that's not what I'm saying, but it's, it's a possibility. At the end of the day, there are allegations against him, and he has to prove that he's innocent. All right. And so, like you rightfully said, running the same ministry with those allegations on your head doesn't look nice. What happens to chapter 6 of the Constitution? The, those are damning allegations. And remember that the COO of Kale Chemicals, before the Gaza Committee told us there are individuals from some allegations, people from the Office of the President, mm -hmm. from Cabs and Ital. Now, those people are separate to Linturi. Even if we dismiss Linturi, it doesn't mean the, the, or the DVP doesn't prosecute the same people. Mm -hmm. So the bug stops with him, courtesy of being the cabinet secretary for culture. But how do you, what would you say on this, and that, that, that there's a need to question the Treasury and the President's office as well before the impeachment? There is that a particular uh, proposal as well Anki, in questioning those two offices. Anki, recall that impeachment is a political legal process. All right. Um, remember that by way of Article 152, Article, uh, sub Article 6, uh, a member of Parliament may present a motion to Parliament, mm -hmm. which means, therefore, that it depends and it solely hangs on and it's been left on parliamentarians to elect to show that they are conscious and conscientious of the plight of governance in the country. Right. Remember that in a manner of Christian uh, imagery, parliamentarians are supposed to be the salt of governance. And that's why a member of parliament can present a motion, which means that if Honorable Wamboka would not have presented such motion to the National Assembly, the issue of impeachment of Linturi would not even arise, okay. not be material. Okay. And so therefore, it hangs upon members of the National Assembly. It is political legal, and therefore, when it comes to the Parliament, to National Assembly, and therefore, and uh, the Parliament therefore gets to have an 11 member select committee, that select committee carries out a quasi judicial process of inquiry in this matter to its conclusion before it presents the report to Parliament, to National Assembly. And therefore, first, there must be serious political goodwill to have an impeachment process become successful. Okay. But I say it was a, a, a political legal because it has got certain legal imperatives and directions that have been laid down in law, primarily by the Constitution. All right, let me hear from Akai here because there's a concern. And in fact, just to quote the former minister, mm. I got a minister earlier on today saying, mm. this particular 11 member committee could be compromised. Mm. Looking at the member 11 names that you have heard, probably, mm. of course, I know it's out of the public. Mm. If it is compromised, mm. and do you believe it can be compromised, mm. does Linturi have um, a defense uh, before the corridors of justice in case he is not rightfully impeached according to whichever perspective? perspective there might be well compromise is relative because okay. it can be either or okay <laughs> yes exactly at the end of the day so and he still has a right to appear before the same committee and the same committee comes up with a report that now goes back to the house mm -hmm. so yes. if the house sees the report is faulty then of course you know at the end of the day like he rightfully said there also has to be goodwill uh -huh. if there's no goodwill if it's a matter of deciding to save him then he will be saved if the report is faulty what happens because we're about to, to wrap up the, the, matter matter, the matter lapses okay yeah and remember just last week uh professor Miguel Akech, my friend launched uh delivered an inaugural lecture yes. on the taming of the barons in fact the issue of impeachment of the current cabinet sector of agriculture mythical in Turi, is an issue that should be seen through the lenses of the taming of the barons by Professor Megaya Ketch. How do we manage, how do we handle the barons okay. in terms of uh, administrative law? And the, is, the process that Minturi, Linturi has to go through uh, speaks to the mechanisms of fair administrative action yes. that the Constitution affords us. Is this a moment of truth and a test for the sitting president, His Excellency Dr. William Bruto, as well, especially now that we're waiting for his address at 1 p.m.? You were saying yeah. he has the powers, anything can happen. Yeah. What would be your closing remarks to this matter this far in his presidency capacity? I believe, like we rightfully said, he can reassign or dismiss, but in Nintura's case, let, 
it's best if the allegations are damning, and I'm sure by now he knows the allegations. If at all he feels that he cannot continue in office, dismiss. And at the end of the day, Linturi has a day with, with Parliament, that is a committee. Let that process also, if he's not dismissed, then let that process follow the law to the latter mm -hmm. and let the truth be known. At the end of the day, as that is being done, like I rightfully told you, there are allegations against certain individuals, be it Kebs, be it Office of the President, that were named. If the DCI and ODPP can lie mm -hmm. and make sure that those people also found a brought to book, okay. that, that will make a lot of sense. And this is a wake-up call to the ministers that were, coming sectors that we were told the other day, right. know nothing about their ministries. Mm -hmm. So now is the time to either wake up or find yourself in parliament. All right, Bigram, as we get nearer to the close of this show, um, the question would be, what if, and you said there's so many powers bestowed on the DPP's office, um, what if the CS Linturi is arrested? Well, actually, it is upon the DPP to direct because it's an independent office. Okay. He can direct the for the arrest of Linturi. On what or circumstances? Even the PS. If at all there is sufficient evidence, because remember this matter has been under investigation for so long. All right. If there is sufficient evidence that moves the DPP to guide that Linturi should be arrested, such should take place. It's an independent office. Will that interfere with and the impeachment process? And remember, remember yes. also that mm. politically speaking, because we have to be politically conscious, right. there is no way the DPP can move to direct that there's a cabinet secretary be arrested without the president being informed. Politically, I'm saying much as it's an independent office, mm. but for the honor of respect in terms of the political circumstances and cards that are in this country, for the DPP to direct that Linturi be arrested, I am sure behind the curtains the president has to be informed yeah. that we are moving to make to take these particular steps because he's a member of the executive. All right. Secondly, if the DPP succeeds in having Linturi arrested, mm. it will give a boost of public confidence in the office of the DPP that actually its prosecutorial powers are alive and that he's moving with jet like speed to make sure that his office becomes materially functional as anticipated in the constitution. On the issue as to whether Linturi should be moved or reassigned, mm -hmm. I will give this example that if poison is put in a cup of water or tea, even if you are to change the cup or pour that poison in a different kind of tool, still poison is in that cup. Mm -hmm. My point is that uh, right now, if you are to do a sport check in this country, public confidence in Mythica Linturi's ability to discharge his functions as CS for agriculture All right. has particularly went. For the president, As we wrap up. he wants people to serve him in the cabinet or pr principal secretaries to serve him because he has got confidence in them. All right. And I would want to imagine pleasantly so, given the manner and the interest that the president has in public execution of responsibilities placed upon him by the constitution, he would speak as Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. All right. The president should say, if you cannot discharge your duties, give me the liberty to appoint other persons to, this, to serve those, uh, that office, please move over. All right. Thank you very much for creating time. Javas Bigambo, for your closing remarks as well. Nudin, just in one statement, your closing remarks on this matter. It's as simple as let the axe fall. Let the axe fall? That is it. All right. Legal Voices in the house today. Thank you very much for creating time. I know it was a short, um, quick fire on matters legality surrounding impeachment. If you've not understood really the procedure, please rush to your constitution. A number of articles, including 152, 157, among others, have been mentioned here in studio. Remember, the highest and the greatest power is the information. My name is Anki Doris Sombata. Of course, uh, lined up is Jarida. And we'll give you update, precise, accurate information on our social media platforms, KTN News across board. Until then, enjoy the rest of your viewing. Good morning.